Hi everyone, it's me, Cynthia, otherwise known as Mama Mess, of CompleteNetAMess.com, a creative playground. And today, I'm going to show you how I was able to transfer my own drawing to this polymer clay bracelet using Mo Clay's ink transfer method. Okay, to complete this project, you're going to need some tracing paper. A permanent marker. I used a Sharpie and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And some alcohol ink markers. I'm using the Touch 5 markers. You'll also need a brush and some isopropyl alcohol. Finally, you'll need some light colored or white clay. I used Primo White. And if you'd like to put a backing and some bands on your bracelet, you'll need a contrasting color. Okay, I'm going to use the widest of the bracelet blanks that come in the Easy Cuff Kit. But I'm going to use the second widest template. I don't want my design to go edge to edge on... Um, on this bracelet and that's because if, if it goes edge to edge it, it will uh, crinkle up at the edges and um, you know ruin the surface of the clay so you'll see a little bit more of that later well, what I'm going to do is take my template and I am working on a piece of uh, tracing paper but I wanted um, to put down a, a piece of white paper so it was easier for you all to see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead with pencil and trace that template out. And once I've got that template traced out, I'm going to take a um, the Sharpie permanent marker. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to use um, Sharpie on polymer clay. It does come out a little less than black. You know, kind of comes out like a, a very dark purple. Um, but I tried to do this method with a whole lot of other kinds of permanent markers. And it didn't work at all. You know, the ink didn't transfer. So that's why I went ahead and just use the Sharpie and I've got one that's a fine point on one side and it's a thicker point on the other side and I'm just going to go ahead and, and begin drawing now you, you could trace your design in uh, pencil first if, you, if you'd like but I'm trying to keep with the spirit of Inktober and so the idea behind Inktober is that you go ahead and draw an ink and if you make what you feel is a mistake, uh, you somehow or other work it into the design. Now I did um, learn this technique from a, a YouTube video that Mo Clay made and I'll give you a link to that um, original video in the information section and she used you know a Zentangle design but um, I felt that this design with the leaves um, had better movement I like a lot of movement in my pieces and I felt like if I tried to take a very narrow um, bracelet shape and fit a Zentangle design in it that it, it, it might just kind of get a little too uh, broken up and um, sort of stop the movement. This type of design, you know, the eye is going to go ahead and move right over the surface of the bracelet. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this design and I'm going to make parts of the line thicker and parts of the line thinner. 
because um, that also adds interest to the piece. It just makes the piece uh, move nicer, look a little bit better. Well, there was a little mistake there, so that looks like a good place to go ahead and make the line thicker. <laughs> Now, as I mentioned before, this is tracing paper. And so, you know, if you found a nice design in, um, you know, one of the grown-up coloring books that they have now, um, or, you know, some sort of copyright-free design uh, on the internet, you could go ahead and, and trace that, you know, onto some tracing paper and, um, you know, use that for your transfer if you feel that you really can't. Uh, draw it yourself. But I'd suggest that you, you know, just give it a try. Just give some sort of abstract design a try. It, it's, uh, it can be very relaxing in the way that, um, you know, adult coloring books are, are relaxing for people. Well, it's a great way to combine both hobbies. <laughs> okay. And I'm just, you know, remaining very relaxed and just adding elements in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, get this design all finished up, finish drawing it, and then when I come back, I'll show you how I um, put it onto the bracelet. Okay, so I finished my drawing, and now I have some white clay that's been rolled out on the thickest setting of my pasta machine. I'm going to use the widest uh, bracelet in the Easy Cuff kit. I'm going to use, uh, you know, the widest bracelet blank, but my drawing was made with the template for the um, mid-size bracelet, right? because I don't want my drawing to go edge to edge. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, use the widest template, the one that goes with the widest bracelet blank. And um, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the clay. Before I do that, um, I'm going to put down a little bit of uh, cornstarch. Because sometimes, sometimes I put this Lucite template down and I, and I can't get it, I can't get it to, uh, you know, easily come back up off the clay. So I found that that helps a little bit. and put that down and I just need to find my craft knife And um, I would guesstimate that, you know, I used about two ounces of clay. This makes it so much easier. And we'll cut that. Let me just trim it up a little bit more. good. 
And I'm going to go ahead and start putting that on the bracelet blank. Center it the best that I can. trim off the excess trim off the excess on this end but they do have a nice there is a nice um, sort of rounded shape to the bottom of the cup and then what I like to do is to just take my fingers and go ahead and round the edge of the cuff over. Just get kind of a nice round edge on there and then I trim it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get my edges all nice and rounded over and trimmed up and uh, then when I come back we'll go ahead and uh, put our drawing on the bracelet okay now I have the clay on the bracelet blank the way that I like it and I've cut my drawing out and now all I'm going to do is take the drawing ink side down and simply Place it right on that, right on the uh, clay. I'm going to try my best to keep it centered and try my best not to let it wrinkle up. I'm going to trim off any excess. And I'm just going to take a minute just to press it down, but I don't want it. I don't want to wrinkle it. You know, there may be some places where uh, the paper doesn't make complete contact with the clay, and you might have to just go back in and uh, redraw those parts. But it's better than getting the whole edge of the paper all sort of crinkled up, and then it just ruins the surface of the clay on you. Okay, so it's really just as simple as that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and cure this. I'm going to cure it at 275 for 30 minutes. Um, I found that, um, you know, it's best if you use it on a thickness that can handle 30 minutes. You get the most transfer of ink if you go for 30 minutes. Um, and I do tent it. I do tent it with some foil. Um, to make sure it doesn't um, scorch, you know, because it is white clay. But that's all there is to it for that part. So I'll go ahead and get it cured, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I add color. Okay, I've just gotten the bracelet out of the oven, and I have these special gloves on so that I won't burn my hands. And what I'm going to do is... I know that there are some spots where uh, the paper with the ink wasn't quite touching the clay. So right now, while it's hot but firm because I've cured it, I'm going to go ahead and just press the paper in a little bit more. There will be spots that we have to touch up, but this helps with that a lot. All right, and I'm just going to keep doing this and uh, get the bracelet cooled down. I do let it cool down naturally. Um, and then we can get it colored in. All right, but we're going to go ahead 
and get that paper pulled off and see how it transferred. And I am pretty happy with this so far. There's a few places that I'm going to touch up. Other times I just leave the nice distressed look. But for this I think I'll go ahead and touch it up in a few places. And it's actually pretty dark. Alright. So I need for it to get cooled down enough that I can handle it. And then I'll touch it up and uh, we'll get it colored in. Okay, I've let my bracelet cool down and um, I've got all of these beautiful markers in various colors and I've also got um, some alcohol and, and a paintbrush. And what I'm going to do, you, you would think that I would do the touch up first, um, but um, until the touch up is heat set, um, it, would, it would be likely to run and uh, ruin the colors. So I'm going to start with the colors and uh, get them a little bit heat set and then put the you know the darker touch-up color on. So and then you know this you just have a little fun with. So I think what I'm going to do let's start with some yellow and I'm just going to go ahead and color in the section. take a darker color. I don't think I'm going to use this one. And I just add that to what I'm thinking of as the bottom of the leaf. Just going to get ready with the baby wipe here because I know I'm going to need that. Dip the brush in some alcohol. And go ahead and just spread those colors out. Just blend those colors. And I'll wipe it on the baby wipe so I don't get uh, the alcohol contaminated with a lot of different colors. And you know, because we use it, and if it goes out of the line, um, that doesn't bother me. It might bother some other people, but it doesn't bother me. I, I actually kind of purposely go outside, outside the designs. Mm, I think that I'd like to do like a bluish green color now. Now you don't have to use two colors. I'll show you in a, just a minute here. I'm gonna just put a little little bit of this green in the bottom of the leaf. And then use the alcohol to push that color all the way up the leaf. And if that's, you know, not dark enough for you, then, you know, you can go back later and uh, after it, after the alcohol evaporates and you can add some more color to that. Nothing wrong with that. And you could even add, you know, you can put two different kinds of colors in a leaf if, if you want to. Might be able to get like a really nice fall leaf. But I like this, it's kind of a watercolory effect.
You know, just with every step it gets better. Now sometimes people actually dip these um, right in the alcohol when they're using them. I think there's a, you know, a lot of different techniques and ways to use them. This to me was the, you know, to use that um, alcohol on the brush was the perfect sort of marriage of um, control and um, chaos. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you can see, um, this might look pretty dark on camera, but you know, as I'm going over this with the alcohol, um, you know, I, I can really see that this, these lines aren't really pure black. I think I want to do an orange color this time. Let's get the wedge side. It's a little bit quicker. And I'm leaving it right on the blank. I think this time I'm going to add like a nice red or a very deep orange. So I think I am going to go ahead and continue coloring this and I'll come back as soon as I've finished and we'll um, go ahead and do the touch up. Okay, so I went ahead and I got the rest of the bracelet colored and um, you know some people would call this done. Some people, you know, some people would think that this is, uh, you know, good enough. And, you know, I do think it's pretty. I do think it's really pretty just the way that it is. Um, even, even with a somewhat distressed look where the ink didn't completely transfer. Um, and so if you wanted to stop here, that would be fine. You know, this looks great just as it is. Um, but if you do want to touch it up, um, what you need to do is just heat set these colors and the way that you can do that is um, you can either put it back in the oven for a few minutes or you can just take your heat gun and um, go ahead and um, blow the heat gun over it for a bit and that will get them heat set for you so let me see I've already done some heat setting here but I'll go ahead and just show you what I mean And you just keep going back and forth and just let the heat let those colors get very set in there uh, if you'd like after you've got all the colors heat set you can come back in with the uh, Sharpie marker and you can touch up wherever the ink didn't transfer and how much and how little of this you do is really up to you there's a lot of this that I would just leave alone um, but there are some places where I think it's just a little too much you know a little too much I really just think that I would rather see it 
filled in a little bit more. Well, it doesn't take long. You just go on through. But like I said, I, th I think, you know, the distress look is, is also pretty. I think it's just the obsessive compulsive in me that I feel like, <laughs> you know, I have to fill these spots in. Oh, a few spots right there. You know, especially once you get the colored ink on there, you know, you can kind of get away with, um, with the black being more distressed. Like I said, it doesn't, it really, it doesn't take long if you do want to do it. Just a few. I think for me, uh, the way that I make a decision uh, about uh, whether or not I'm going to fix where it's been distressed ha has to do with if, if it uh, affects a pretty shape I made. <laughs> if, I, if I made a shape on here originally and thought, oh, that's really nice, I like that shape, and then it comes out of the oven and that shape's gone, then I, I you know, go back and and put it back in. Just really carefully. Straight lines are, are you know, a pain. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. Now again, after you, you know, sort of fix up and fill in, uh, you might decide that, you know, this is it. This is, I like the way this looks and I want to keep it like this and that's fine. Um, but again, um, you should either put it back, you know, in the oven for a few minutes to get um, the Sharpie marker heat set or use the heat tool to get the Sharpie marker heat set. Now at this point, you can put a backing and some bands on the bracelet. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful. You can support us by hitting like and subscribe below. Please follow us on Facebook and visit us on www.completeandoutermess.com and we'd love to see some photos of bracelets you've made.